Okay, so I'm back in the lab playing with low voltage tubes. So here both the filament and the plate are running off of 12 volts and I've built a simple cathode follower. I am using a 100K resistor for no particular reason. I just stuck that there to see what happens. And putting in a triangle wave with a DC offset of zero to the grid. Oh, actually, let me show the schematic. So this is a very simple DC coupled follower. I'm putting the signal into the grid, taking the output from the cathode, and I have this 100K to ground. So I tried putting in a signal centered around zero volts, and I found that if I did that, I could put in a three volt peak to peak signal without distorting the output. So the input is yellow, the output is green. And if I start to crank that, you can see that it sort of starts to smooth out down here on this downward going extent. Let me crank that down to three volts peak to peak. Now what's interesting is that false dad is not getting this particular behavior. When I tried the same setup in false dad, here the input is the green line, the output is the red line, and you see it's just hard chopping at some particular point. And in particular, it's not rounding out, it's actually hitting the zero value here. Now, to try to understand what's going on here, what I did is I took this max voltage and cranked it down to zero. And I see if I do that, this output is sitting at a bias point of half a volt. But if I look over here, I can either look at this value and I can get the same thing if I turn the input kind of all the way down or if I shut off the wave generator, it's pretty much around the same. I have a bias at the output of like 1.2 volt. So real life and false dad are giving me very different values for where we're sitting at the output. And I think that accommodates for that behavior we were seeing. Anyway, I should be able to get better behavior at the low end if I put some DC bias here. This is DC coupled, I don't know. Let me put this at three volts just for fun. Let's see what happens there. All right, so if I put it at three volts, everything shifts up and now I have some symmetry. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play with the DC value of the input and see if I can get a wider input range that will give me an output that's undistorted. Okay, so I cranked my input amplitude up to five volts peak to peak. This is still at DC. Let me figure out where the DC is. Oh, here it is. All right, let's play with the offset of the input. Ah, there we go. All right, so that's around 820 millivolts offset, fix that. Let me crank the amplitude of the input wave up further. I should get a tripod, or maybe there's a way to get video output from the scope that I could capture. That might be convenient. All right, so let's see. For the amplitude, let's crank that up further. Okay, now here's six volts peak to peak. Uh, let's crank that some more. All right, so here's eight volt peak to peak going in. And let's play with the offset some more. All right, uh, let me hit the auto scale thing. Oh, well, this will do for my current purposes. All right, so let's see. I want to go back to my wave generator offset. All right, let's see how far we can push this. Amplitude, let's... Crank this up to, oh, it looks like it has a max of 10 volts peak to peak input. That's okay. So let's play with the offset here. Whoop. All right. Uh, come on, just trigger it. All right, there we go. All right. So it does look like there's a range here of offsets that I could use for that. Ah, control one. Okay, so there's a range. It looks like five volt offset. 
down to like 3.5 volt or 3.75, 3.8, somewhere, somewhere around here and five volts, which is the max I can do on this, on this particular signal generator built into the scope. I can get an output that's not distorted. So the question is, what about that 100K? Is there a better choice for that resistor? Okay, so I replaced the 100K resistor here with a 100K pot. And just for fun, let's turn the offset down so that we see some distortion at the lower end there. And let me play with the pot. And let me, and let me play with the potentiometer. All right. Huh, okay, so this is all the way towards, I guess, the 100K end. And as I reduce it, well, I guess at some point, if that 100K goes all the way to zero ohms, it's grounding the output. Huh, so this suggests that 100K is good. Maybe higher than 100K is good. Hmm. Okay, I put in a one mega ohm pot here. And let's see, as I change the pot from one extreme to another. Okay, there's that volume control effect when I have the pot at a low ohmage. And here it is all the way at one mega ohm. Why, why is the circuit working so well with a one mega ohm resistor? If I turn this offset back up, yeah, okay, here I'm at a four volt offset, putting in a 10 volt peak to peak signal. And it's um, working quite well with a mega ohm. Does that make any sense? To have a one mega ohm resistor there? What happens if I make this an infinite resistor? So I'm just gonna yank the pot. Okay, so that's equivalent to not having this resistor here at all connected to anything and just looking at the output of the cathode. Wait, why is, why does this work? I'm measuring the cathode, but there should be no current because it has nowhere to go. So why am I reading output? <laughs> I don't understand. All right. Uh, let me take that offset and yeah, okay, there's, what in the world? Okay, yeah. That's like saying this circuit should work if I delete this resistor. Okay, wait a minute. It's, at least Falstad thinks something's happening, but there shouldn't be any current flowing through here. So I don't understand I don't understand why this is, why is this working? <laughs> Where is the current flowing? The scope has a non-infinite input impedance. What's going on here? Let's see, what's the scope's input impedance? It's one meg. That's, that's a pretty big input impedance, I would say. But I really don't understand why this is working. Somebody explain to me, please, why this is working.